In this video, we're going to be talking about the SysML package diagram. The package diagram is a structural diagram, and it is one of the nine different types of SysML diagram. So the others are activity, sequence, state machine, use case, requirement, block definition, internal block, parametric, and package. So let's look at the package diagram and our agenda. Our agenda is we're going to go through some definitions that are readily available to us. We will explain the difference between package and block definition diagrams. We will explain and show packages on the package diagram and what they look like. We'll show the package versus the model elements and how they're similar and different. We will talk through the smart package and give an example. We have import and access relationships, which we will show how to apply those relationships and how they work. We'll go through the methodology and package structure and how they are related. We'll talk about the auxiliary resources and project usages. So with that, we'll get started. So to look up some definitions, we can go to help within Cameo and then go to other documentation and go to SysML plugin user guide. Within the SysML user plugin guide, you can go to page 521 and look up the definition of the SysML package diagram, which you can see here and on the next page here. The takeaway is that the package diagram is going to show the user how the model is broken down or decomposed or structured. It is not showing how the system of interest is broken down or structured. So we'll jump back to Cameo to explain the difference between the block definition diagram and the package diagram. You'll see that we're creating a block definition diagram, which is a decomposition of the system of interest. We have the system block, the subsystem level with subsystem A, B, and C, and the component level, which is the third level. Now that we've built out our decomposition of our system of interest, we can start organizing the blocks that we just created into a package structure. The methodology will typically be the thing to refer to to know where uh, blocks and other elements should live but we're creating our own package structure right now where we have level one, level two, and level three, and we're dragging the level of block into the appropriate package. I can drag the BDD onto the package diagram so you can see them both at the same time. You can see that the package aspect of the diagram is talking about how the elements are filed within uh, the containment tree while the BDD is talking about the breakdown of the system of interest. Note, in SysML, the package diagram is not really used all that much because the containment tree is so clear and transparent. Let's add another level of package structure to help us prove a point. So you'll note that we create some new packages and then drag the block elements into some new packages and you'll see a flag on the package diagram Basically, it's telling us that uh, as we view the diagram is incorrect, the blocks should live within a different location. You can use the red X troubleshooting guidance to either remove the incorrect block from the diagram, or you can just fix it yourself by dragging the block into its correct package. Note, you can move a block's model location within the containment tree without touching the containment tree. You can drag the block within the package diagram onto a different package and it will re-nest that block into that location. So we're going to go ahead and explain the difference between packages and models. So to do that, we will do some restructuring of the containment tree. You may want to do this restructuring when you realize that your model is just getting super, super large and you might have a team associated with subsystem A, a team associated with subsystem B, and a different team associated with subsystem C. Then you might want to separate these in, from one model into different subsystem models. So we can right click and refactor each of the packages for subsystem A through C into models and you'll see that that brings it down in the containment tree to the bottom. We can go back and drag back in subsystem A, B, and C models onto our package diagram and show how they all interact. The next step is to actually project use these subsystem models. And to do that, you can export the packages to a new project. This exporting and creating multiple projects will allow you to partition the models and keep each team separated with their own version control on their own project. So now we'll talk about smart packages and we'll go ahead and create a smart package. 
and we'll just title it Smart Package One. And what we do here is we can manually just drag and drop items into the Smart Package, and it's basically a holder for um, the other elements elsewhere in the model. So it's not copy pasting it and it's not moving it. It's basically just showing it in a different location. So if I like select uh, subsystem A and then I do a selected containment tree, it's always going to revert back to um, finding it in the just either model or package element, not the smart package element. So if I add subsystem A to the smart package, subsystem A is here and here. It's just like a reference or like a kind of like a hyperlink, if you will. So if I like, uh, again, go to select the containment tree, note that it selects subsystem A here and, and not the one up here. Um, they are one in the same element uh, to kind of prove that to us further. I can select subsystem A here and then write a documentation. Um, and then I can click on something else and you'll see this one has no documentation. I can select this one and you see the documentation. You also note that uh, the blue means things have been edited. When I click save, it, it changes everything to black. So if I go in here and change um, the documentation of subsystem A to one, two, three, to one, two, three, four, five, six, and I click elsewhere, note that it changes subsystem A and subsystem A up here to blue because they have been modified since the last save. Also with smart packages, you don't have to just do the drag and drop method. You can create rules. So if I go to my specification of my smart package and scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, so I had additional elements that I had dragged in there, you could do a query instead. So for this query, I'm just going to do a find uh, block so I'll take all the blocks that are in, let's just do the whole project and click OK. And so now this list right here is all of the blocks within the entire project. So now we'll talk about the import and access relationships. To do this, I'm basically going to clear out all of my package structure. And we've got my original package right here. We'll create three different packages. We'll call them namespace one, two, and three. We'll use the align tool to line everything up and then we'll add some blocks to each of our namespaces. We'll create a BDD within each of our namespace packages. Then we'll add the BDD icon to each of the namespace packages within our package diagram for clarity purposes. So if I select block and then add it to this namespace or this package and click here, and if I go down to this filter options button and make sure that uh, I've got filter by package imports set selected to on and I then create a package import so I do namespace one is importing namespace two that you see there now what's going to happen is I'm going to only see the blocks which are in namespace one and then imported from namespace two so if I change these filter settings, then you'll see the other items. But if I just have my filter by package import set to true, then it will only show me items that I'd like to see. Furthermore, if I do an element import instead of a package import, I can import just a single element from namespace three to namespace two. So this relationship right here, we are importing system three A block into namespace two. So if I create a new block here and look at what I can name it, I will see system two, which is in namespace two, and then I will see system three A, which is in uh, namespace three, which has been imported. Note that I do not see system three B. Also, if I go back to namespace one and look at the options here, you'll see that I have the ability to use system three A. And that's because it was imported from namespace three to namespace two, and then imported from namespace two to namespace one. So that's why I have all three of these options available. So now let's talk about the access relationship. We'll do this by creating an element import 
from namespace 2 to this sub the system 3b and it still says import but we can go into the specification of that and scroll down to visibility and change it from public to private and note that the name changes from import to access you can read about the visibility settings of public and private here but what what it means is is that from namespace 2 I will be able to see now system 2, system 3a, and system 3b, but when I go over to namespace 1, I only see system 1, system 2, and system 3a. Because it was an access or a private link, it no longer um, daisy chains to two levels. Namespace 1 cannot see system 3b. So now we'll talk about methodology and package structure. And to do this, I'm going to create a new project and look at all of the different projects we can create. We'll look at the Magic Grid V2 blank as an example. Magic Grid is a type of methodology. We see when the Magic Grid template is pulled up that the package structure has already been created for us. So we no longer need to worry about a package diagram and figuring out all those details because our methodology has already outlined that for us. All we need to do is follow our methodology and build out our system of interest. A couple of notes on auxiliary resources. We can go here to the gear and say show auxiliary resources and this will show all of the auxiliary resources. We can create a package diagram to see what's going on behind the scenes. We can drag our model element inside of our package diagram. We can then use the layout button to enable us to see the internal profiles, model libraries that are within the model element. This will allow us to see the apply and import relationships that are going on behind the scenes when we open up Magic Grid blank V2. So this is what we end up with. We can note that the import relationship here is a public visibility, which is showing that it would be importance of access. And then the apply is the profile application. So this is always going to be between a profile element and a type of uh, package element, such as model library or model. Finally, we'll talk about project usages. So if we go to options and then project usages, we can then use a project. This can be a project from your Teamwork Cloud environment or from your machine. And you can import, remove, reload, open, or do some options with that. We'll leave it like this. If you do import a uh, project as a used project, it will be nested underneath here. And then when you click OK, it will be down here. And you can use the model elements that are within your used project uh, up here in your model. Um, so it's definitely good for libraries and uh, other projects that you have, such as like subsystem projects, um, etc. We hope this video has helped you learn when to use the package diagram and how to structure the, your model and how that's different from the decomposition and structure of your system of interest. Leave us some comments and questions below. Thanks.